Hey, 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 welcome to the show. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome to another week of Love and Beyond the IG Podcast. With your hosts, Jason and Tina Marie. That's me, and today we have a special guest, Raven Stevenson. Say hello to the people, Raven. Hi, people. How are you doing? It's good to be with you. (laughs) Wonderful. So this week, we're just going to chat with Raven about love, relationships, and longevity. Yeah. So, Raven, let's start us off by telling us, are you married? Are you divorced? Are you single? Or are you in a relationship? I am in a relationship. Okay. okay. And how long have you been in your relationship? I'm a little over four years now. Okay. Wow, that's, a, that's a, you're okay. You got a little longevity in that thing. Okay. So, <laughs> so I know, Jason, now we're always talking about relationships have stages. So, would you say you are definitely past the honeymoon stage, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That, that has come and gone. Right. right. Mm-hmm. What stage or phase would you say your relationship is in right now? I would say it's in the phase of kind of like redefinition. Okay. I would say. Okay. Um, yeah, absolutely. Where you realize that evolution is taking place individually for, for both parties. And so it's important to kind of redefine, you know, and, and understand what that relationship looks like so that you both can get on the same page with one another. So okay. that's that's what I would say, re- redefinition. So do you think that being in a relationship now is kind of more complicated than it used to be? I do, but I also think that things are just more complicated <laughs> than they used to I, you be. Know so it's not, it's not just the relationship, no, it's just things I, in general. I just think, right. I There's just a think, lot going on. I just think younger people, and I can say that because I'm a little older, y'all just complicate things. Relationships aren't that complicated to me. So, Raven, are you over 30? I'm not. I'm on the see, cusp. I'm see 29. what I tell you. Okay, see, okay. And, and it's so complicated, gonna, right? So, mm-hmm. so we're not going to say age. Okay, so right. you're on the cusp of almost 30. Okay, well, then she's in the age bracket of where things are complicated. complicated right. oh, okay. I think that's the stage where you just don't want to talk about it. Like, okay, you know, if I say complicated, you won't ask many more questions about that. So I, I get it. I get it. We have I all- can't confirm or deny. That. <laughs> so what, what makes relationships more complicated? What do you mean it's more complicated? Share with us what you mean by that. And it, it may not be that the relationships are or complicated. Things. Right. I think it's that Younger people, as Jason <laughs> would, would say, I think it's that they have so many ideas and things that they want to do. And it's like there's a freedom of movement or just a freedom that's desired that within the context of a relationship as we were taught as or as we saw or maybe experience when we were younger, it just doesn't fit so well. So I think that's why we say things are complicated because it's like, oh, I don't really know how this looks with everything that I want to do or with everything that I have in mind that I'd like to accomplish. And I need to find like the person who is down for all of this that I'm trying to do. Maybe all the moving around that I want to do or okay. all the ideas or startups or whatever the case may be that, I, that I'm interested in. I need to find like that person who is absolutely okay with living life on the edge a little. So do you think that's something that comes up at this point? Like, hey, are you down for moving every two years or every year or living life on the edge if I want to be on the edge or me doing a startup if I want to do a startup? Are you at that point now where you're trying to figure out if this is the person that's going to do that with you? Where does all that fit? Right. It's partially that, but it's also mostly, I think a lot of things, like Jason was saying, I think you're right. I think you've got us figured out because I think (laughs) ultimately we overcomplicate things because we don't know what it is that we want to do specifically. Yeah. And because of that, we can't communicate it. (laughs) So it's like, it's like, I want to do this, but I don't really know where I want to be. I'm just okay with letting the chips fall (laughs) like where they may. (laughs) So you can't really, like, it's hard to build a plan when you don't necessarily have the particulars or you're okay with not necessarily having the particulars. But, hey, I know the what. Mm -hmm. I just don't know the how, and I'm okay with that. You might need a little bit more details than that. 
like my faith might be strong in this thing, but you, you might need a little bit more to, to stand on for that. So I, I think we do tend to overcomplicate things because we don't always get to the point where we just are definite about, okay, right. at least making some more decisions for ourselves. We like, we, we might leave too much open-ended too much on the, and too I much think that's what it is. I think a lot of you young people leave they a do, lot of stuff. They? Oh yeah. I'm like, nail some be, stuff down. We Let's just want to be answers. free. We just want to be free. Right. We just want to be right. happy. We just, like you guys don't really, I, I don't know what it is. I you, don't know. And I, I want to say like, it's that sunny disposition, but then it's sort of like a naiveness, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's sort of thinking that life is like, you have so many more years to plan. So you really don't have to do it right now. Or you don't have to pinpoint certain things, or you it's okay with. I don't know. I don't know. Um, How do you explain that? I don't know. I just know <laughs> that one common theme when I speak with young adults is that it's complicated. These relationships are complicated. No, you had you guys have it easy. If you want to see your significant other, what do you do? You just pop out your phone. You can FaceTime them. You can talk to them. You can do all that. All we had was a telephone, and the telephone was in the house. We couldn't even just reach out and touch them all the time. They right? do have things a lot easier, It's just right? a lot easier to communicate and get along with one another, but just it's so complicated. <laughs> like, so you don't think it's complicated? You think they're making it up in their mind? They are. But again. <laughs> right, but he said it's so y'all in your mind. Definitely y'all in your mind. <laughs> but, but some people overthink it. I think you guys underthink it. I think they do them both. To a certain yeah, extent. Yeah, I think that, yeah. do you think you underthink it or you overthink it? I, I think it's a combination of both. Yeah. I think overthinking is like usually the default. And then you get to a point where you're tired of overthinking. So then you just do something irrational and underthink it completely. <laughs> <laughs> and then someone ex asks you to explain it and you're just like, it's complicated. So it's complicated. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. That, that is true. That is very true. Right. So share with us, what have you learned in your four years in this relationship that maybe you didn't know going in? Like, just take us through the, the good, the bad, and the ugly. No, I'm just kidding. Just a little bit. Just <laughs> take us through your, your relationship, like what you've learned. Well, what I've ultimately learned is all relationships are designed to teach you about yourself. I remember there's like a Reverend Ike lesson out there that's, I meet no one but me. Okay. And so yeah. what I've learned is that I've learned a lot about myself and I've learned in a lot of ways that, and even through my career in the military, like me being an assertive person was not something that I had innate or by nature, at least okay. something that I expressed. I should say that. Cause I think ultimately we have these right. traits within us and we right. just have to bring them to expression. Right. So true. Um, and that was something that I did not express because I never really had to. I've got my two older brothers, my parents to support me, strong support system, never really had to advocate for myself in a lot of different ways. I was always validated externally. So I didn't have to do that so much internally. And I realized that throughout the relationship, a lot of those themes kept showing up where I was just kind of okay with not advocating for myself or kind of used to just allowing that, not really speaking when I needed to speak up for things or not really saying how I feel just to be fair about communication, right. because that's not my partner's fault or anybody's partner's fault. If they don't speak right. up, it's my responsibility to, exactly. to do that. But it just wasn't something that I was comfortable with doing before now was in the first year the first two years when did you come to realize that hey if if i i, I like i need to speak up for myself because my brothers aren't going to do it and my parents aren't going to do it because i'm in this relationship by myself right. this is me and the other person so at, at what year did you realize that you needed to, to speak up to be heard or to advocate for yourself the, the way you were feeling it was about <clears throat> between two to three years in when I realized that I needed to do it. Okay. And then it took a little bit of time, maybe a few months after that, to actually put that into practice as well. So yeah, not the quickest learner <laughs> in that. In that I'm, normally I'm a quicker learner than that. Okay. Uh, but yeah, there again, when you're put outside of your comfort zone, sometimes it takes you a minute to really just step out there and do what you know needs to be done so that you can truly like express that love for yourself. And that's ultimately where I think it all leads to when we say it's complicated or 
all, all these other things where we don't really know how to express is mm -hmm. because we sometimes we rush into things and we haven't taken that time to kind of learn to love ourselves first. You know, and, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say that leads to miscommunication and all of those other things down the line because it, I haven't even learned to communicate with myself appropriately. So how can I communicate with someone else? I agree. So I know we had a panel before of young people and mm -hmm. we, we talked about that, that I think a lot of the problems in today's relationships is that you don't love yourself. Right. They've never been taught or they don't know that in order to get the love that you're seeking. So I want somebody to show me love and I want to feel love. But the problem is that you don't know how to love yourself first. Right. So therefore, that person doesn't know how to love, love you, you the right way. Yeah. I think the biggest step in relationships going in is that you have to understand yourself. You have to love yourself. Therefore, it allows you to love the other person and the other person to love you the way you need and want to be loved. True. When you, when, you know. I, I, I agree. One thing that you guys are great with communicating, you guys will. I don't, I don't, say, com I don't well, say communicate. I would say verbalizing. Well, you guys will verbalize. I'll <laughs> right. say that too. Right. Yeah. So you guys will verbalize, but the more seasoned couples, we may not communicate or express ourselves as well as you all. You don't have a problem with that. So yeah. I think lots of times that you guys get into relationships and you're looking for that other person to validate you, yeah, right. to love you, mm -hmm. to kind of give you the love that you want. But then they're taking their cues from you. Right. Right. So, so right. you, you teach right. them how to treat you. Right. You, and you teach them how to love you. And so they respond to your needs according to what they think you want, because if you're not telling them and you're not showing it, the truth is that sometimes we don't love ourselves enough. Right. Like we don't know we have to love ourselves first. Wouldn't you agree? I agree. And I was going to say, like you, you were saying people enter relationships looking for people to validate them. I think that some people enter relationships and expect for the other person to complete them yep. in a sense. Yeah. And they don't realize that they should be entering the, a relationship from a place of wholeness. And unless you both do that, there are going to be issues at some point down the line. If they don't emerge immediately, they are sure to come because you're not whole yet. You're looking for something outside of yourself that is in you that you won't find outside of you. Right, right. exactly. That, that put a strain on relationship because you're going to always be looking for something because you're going to never feel fulfilled. Right. You right. Know, like you can't make a person happy enough all the time. I mean, it's just not your they have to Right. They have to be able to do it for themselves. As, as you said, you have to come into the relationship. So, and part of this podcast is to help people understand what relationships are, how to make them succeed. And I think that's a very big key right there is that when we go into relationships, we have to feel whole. We can't right. look for somebody oh. else to complete us. We have to look for someone who compliments us. Right. And we're looking for people to complete us. But if you're incomplete, then you're allowing that other person to say what your other half is supposed to be. Be willing to learn to be complete. It's, right. it's a journey, right? So if I don't come into the relationship whole, that's fine. I have to move forward. I have to learn. I have to express. I have to figure out who I am to be a better person so I can be better in the relationship. But sometimes when you come into relationships and you're not whole and you're leaving that space for growth, the person who you get into a relationship with, they feel as though they're supposed to define you. That's true. So then yeah. you, and then, if you leave it Right. Point. And then you one day you wake up and you look at yourself and you say, I'm not the person I want to be. Right. I don't like who you made me out to be. Right? right? So therefore, you're putting who you are in the hands of someone else, how they want you to be or how they want to dictate your mm -hmm. life or how they... Or I, I would agree with that. I would say that it could probably go both of those ways. If you have someone who's willing to kind of work through those changes, I think that's ultimately like a key to relationship is understanding that there's going to be personal evolution that takes place throughout the course of relationship. That's just the nature of people like developing in their consciousness. And if you can love a person and understanding that love is not just the emotion or even just like an action or a thing to do, it's hard to really describe or define. I think that's another thing is that we've got a definition of love that is conditional, more or less, that we think love is this, oh, it's doing nice things for a person or it's complimenting a person mm -hmm. 
-hmm. or it's the way I feel about a person. And if my feelings change, then that must mean I no longer love a person. Well, no, that's not love. I mean, emotions are going to change from time to time, but there's more to that is required. And like, ultimately, if you love a person, then that love doesn't change despite your emotions that might change. You still respect and salute the divine nature, the spiritual nature of that other individual. So you said that you would say at this point in your relationship, you're at the redefining stage, right? Right. So with that, did was there conflict? Because anytime someone has to redefine anytime. something, there was there's always usually, some conflict. Yeah, there's yeah. usually some type or of something, struggle. some trigger. Right. Some struggle or some like because we all know change is hard, right? Yeah. So then right. when one person realizes that I need to change, not for the other person, but I need to change for, for me, me, then that sometimes that brings turmoil into the relationship. Did you um, encounter that? And then how are you dealing with it? And how did you overcome it? Yes, I'll, I'll just say that I, I encountered needing to change for me, needing okay. to advocate for me, yep. um, and needing to express myself and learn to love myself in the form of communicating my thoughts and feelings and intentions and things transparently and honestly. And that was difficult for me. It was di- difficult for both of us, actually, just because what it was new for right. both of us. Right. Okay. Uh, so that was, it was just un- uncharted waters, but ultimately continuing to communicate through that has been what has allowed us to overcome the situation. And it's still a process, you know, but it, continuing to communicate and continuing to respect one another. And even um, applying some of, the, some of the things from our class is helping as well, but just communicating respectfully, respecting boundaries, things of that nature is are helpful for, for us. Right. Now, so when you stood up, how did that make you feel and how did that change your relationship? So I, okay. So you say, you know what? I need to be more assertive. I need to be whatever. It is. More I vocal. Need to be right. Vocal. So how does that, how did that make you feel when you started to assert yourself? It's a little weird at first. <laughs> I can do that professionally when I need to professionally, I guess when needed professionally, but it was just weird to do it in that space. Mm-hmm. I think. Um, so weird at first, but then it was like, okay, it, it made future communications easier to do. So it was just kind of like that, that first hurdle was the toughest, but afterwards it, it made everything else a little bit easier for me to be able to handle. So you said, but then how did that, then your relationship, did it, did it take a dip when you first started and then got better over time? Yes, it oh, did. Okay. Yeah. Yes. And so when you say communicate, because that's a word that we always throw around, right? Communication is key. Communication is key. So you said that it helped you to communicate, like you guys started to communicate. What exactly does that mean? Like, how did you communicate? Because, and I, and I asked this question because so often we tell people, well, communication is key. You really need to talk to your partner, but not everyone communicates the same way. Right. Right. So we kind of have to break down like what exactly constitutes communication and what does that look like? What is communication? What do you mean it helped, you know, you to communicate to you? Right. In in your relationship. Right. So that if someone else is less assertive and they're at the point where, you know, they're like, OK, they're the person who doesn't speak up for themselves a lot or doesn't voice what how they're feeling or their opinions or what or their needs. How do they do that? How do you tell that person who's listening to you how you did it and what constitutes communication? Because it's not everything for everybody. So just specifically for you. That's a good question. I I would say communication for me, I definitely had to have a willing listener, which took some time. And I, I will say that you won't always have that at the point of conflict. Like sometimes you have to allow some time and and you have to communicate and agree on that too. So even agreeing to just take some time, like, okay, let's take a couple of days or whatever your situation is, let's take a day, let's take an evening, whatever the situation is that makes sense for that particular couple. Let's take some time first so, so that the emotions, we can have a chance to sit with and process these emotions, but the information is still fresh so we can talk about it but not with so much feelings and hostility yeah. right yeah. So, too much emotional emotional investment into it and then from there 
it's kind of like being able to have a dialogue where it's like, okay, this is how I'm feeling. And sometimes it's about like yielding and letting maybe the other person speak. If you know that you're typically, one thing you, you got to know how to read the room. Okay. <laughs> so sometimes like you might have someone like if, if you know that you're typically the calmer of the two or whatever the case may be, it might be good to, <laughs> it, it might be good to let the other person start first and then just re reaffirm that you're listening to what they're saying by maybe repeating back a little bit of paraphrasing what it is that they said. So you can say, well, okay, well, I, I hear you saying this and I just want to make sure I understand that you said, you know, this is how you're feeling. Just, just to let them know that, hey, I heard you. I heard what you're saying and then allow them to confirm that, you know, okay, yes, that's, that's what I'm saying. And then figure out how they felt about that. Okay. Well, how did, how did this particular situation make you feel? Just try to ascertain more information so that, cause I, I find that when people verbalize, when you ask someone how they feel, rather than just allowing them to feel it, they tend to logically like that action of putting it into words right yeah calms them down it does right sometimes. right yeah they're like, like wait a it, minute what you, you tricked me what, what do you mean how do i feel yeah. right instead yeah. of hostility going back and forth right. where it's nothing's getting done you're like okay well just tell me how you feel and they're like what huh? what i wasn't Express expecting that, that. <laughs> right. right so communicating to a fact where not only did you want change but you realized that you had to change the way you approached the other person right because typically and i know we talked about the whole turtle and hailstorm uh, <laughs> concept <laughs> in class but they're typically my approach to like i'm not a big confrontational person i'll have my rare moments i'll say rare uh <laughs> i'll have my rare moments from where i might yeah, coming from my, in my biased opinion, right, right. I have rare moments where I'll engage, but typically I will avoid confrontation. So my typical approach will be like, I don't want to talk about it. Yeah. I don't, I don't really want to talk about that. Like, let's just give it time and then whatever, like smooth it over, <laughs> let time smooth it over. <laughs> time doesn't really smooth things over if you don't address it. No, it so just makes it worse. So yeah, you just. So how did you change that? How did you, because now you're the, you're the calm person. You're right. the person who really does not want to talk about things that are confrontational. So how did you, how did you approach that? So you're like, okay, let's just give it time. And you're thinking that, okay, in three days, they're going to forget about it. I'm going to forget about it and everything's going to be okay. But now you realize that that's not the case and that it actually needs to be discussed. So again, going back to the communication how do you communicate that because now you're showing your, the person that you're in a relationship with hey wait a minute they're thinking she never does this now why all of a sudden she wants to talk about things mm -hmm. so how did you communicate that to, to your partner let's address these issues that we're having i know they were like what's wrong with you, you know? all, all of a sudden you're gonna jump <laughs> right. up and change on right me. right yeah. <laughs> Still asking for a little bit of time, just to allow emotions to not be so high. Again, um, allowing them to kind of lead the conversation to explain like what their thoughts were, how they felt, me basically just actively listening to confirm that and then following them with, okay, well, these, these are my thoughts and these are, this is how I feel. And I, I understand where you're coming from. And I just want to offer this perspective for you so that you can understand where I'm coming from too. And I know I don't often do that. So this may be shocking. Like this may be different. <laughs> I just want you to know that this is what I'm thinking and going forward, like I intend to share these types of things with you because I think it's just better if we can be transparent and respectful of one another in this way. Now, was that very invigorating to you when you were able to do that? It, it was first and like, the, oh, this is, I <laughs> kind of way and they're like, okay, well, this is like, I think as you're doing it, it just kind of becomes, you know, you, the necessity of it. And then you actually being able to follow through with it makes that feel like such a worthwhile process. And just knowing that it's, it's so beneficial for you and the person that you're with. Like, and just for future relationships, regardless of whether the relationship works out or not, mm -hmm. like the ability to communicate healthily 
with other people and like be truly expressive of yourself is just such a, is one of the most loving things you can do for yourself yeah. is to be honest about how you feel. So you said the need, the need to do that. What brought on your need? Jason and I always say, don't start a relationship this yeah. away if you don't plan on finishing it that way. Mm -hmm. And that's in, in a marriage. So, and I say that in marriages because as women, we sometimes start a relationship or a marriage and we're doing everything. Mm -hmm. We're not voicing our opinion. We're not um, expressing what we need. We're not expressing how we want to be loved. We're just giving it. We're mm -hmm. giving it, giving it, giving it. And then one day we feel a lack. Right. And right. so we're going, wait a minute, this is one sided and I'm not getting everything I need in the relationship. So what was that need point? You said, you know, the need for you to voice yourself. What was the need? What was the revelation in your life that said, hey, Raven, things need to change for you? What was that turning point? I would say that the need for me wasn't so much the relationship itself as much as it was like just my realization of what I want in life in general yeah. okay. and how my ideas about or how my subconscious beliefs about my relationship were directly counter to that. And I can explain that a little bit more. I am at a place where I believe in prosperity in the full sense of the word. And I want to accomplish that for myself and in health and love, financially, relationships, all of these ways. But I realized that subconsciously, the reason why I wasn't voicing my beliefs or I wasn't voicing like the things that I needed was because I didn't feel like I deserved okay. in a way to do that. Mm -hmm. And it, I, I realized like, as I thought about what I want, like, and it, as I've been like making it a point this year to be intentional about writing down and being specific about things that I want and things that I'm working on and different um, entrepreneurial endeavors, I was like, wait a minute, there's something that's off. There's the reason why like I'm not making ground in some of these areas. And so I had to examine like just where things were. And I realized that, oh, <laughs> like I can't say that I believe that I deserve all these great things and I deserve to have peace and I deserve to, to be full of love and life and all of these things. And then subconsciously, I believe that I don't deserve to actually express myself right. because I've never had to because it's uncomfortable or just because it is just not my natural territory. It like, it doesn't make sense. I need to do this because I'm not loving myself fully if I don't do this. And that that's kind of where it came from. It just came from a realization of just looking at the totality of my life and seeing how spiritually I wasn't in alignment with what I said that I wanted. Ultimately, mm, she hit you with so, that spirituality. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. 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 yeah, you can't argue with that. See, <laughs> so with summing that all up, it has to take an individual because oftentimes we do want that, right? We mm -hmm. want abundance in every sense of the word. We want to have money. We want to have love. We want to have health. We want to have a family. We want all of those things. But then, as you said, subconsciously, we're really working against ourselves, right? Right. And right. even though we don't even have to be taught that, it's just something that we come up with in the back of our heads that I really don't deserve it or I really don't feel worthy, worthy. enough, right? Mm -hmm. So if there are people out there in relationships that in that person's mind, they're not really demonstrating what they need to in the relationship, what advice would you give them? Like the old Raven, you know what you were doing before in the relationship. That's there are people out there to do the same still thing. Still stuck in that stage, right? They don't. They don't speak up for themselves. They don't bring conflict because they rather not deal with it and let the other person have their way right. instead of making it a more of I deserve the type of love that I'm giving. Also, we kind of keep growing into this. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy, even though we don't say that. But I think people really action. feel that. Oh, yeah. Right. And so in your actions, like, again, your actions speak louder than your words. So they're not doing things to show that they love themselves. So what advice would you give them to tell them that in order to come out, to be more um, of Assertive. who they are, to yeah. be authentic? Yeah. What do they need to, to do? That's a very good question. I would say that it starts by taking some time to just look at 
who you are I and mean, look at what's going on in your life. Like totally take a total look. One thing that I, I did was I constructed a couple of lists. I actually have a trainer. He's kind of like a life coach and trainer all wrapped into one, but he gave me some advice to create what we call an I am list so that we can define who I am and all positive things. If it's something that we feel like we might not currently be expressing, okay. but that we feel like in our true nature, we are like, this is, this is who I am. This is who I'm meant to be, but write it in like the present positive tense. I am affirmative. Like this is who I am. So I, I spent some time writing that. And then I also constructed a power list and he gave me some pretty decent guidelines to follow. I really like making lists. So I made a table. He so was you got busy, like, you got busy right away. He was like, yeah, I can do yeah, this. Right. Yeah. So he was like, make a power list. Like just when you make this list, just think about like where you spend your time and where you want to spend your time. Like it was supposed to be not too formal. Just think about like where you currently spend your time and where you want to spend your time and like put it together with your I am list so that you know, like, even if your I am say you want to be, I don't know, a doctor. All right. When you are constructing your power list, what are you doing with your time? Are you watching TV? Are you going to work? You going to the gym? Are you studying for the MCAT? What are, what are you doing with your time? And then what should you be doing with your time in order to become or in order to be who you are? Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah, it does. And then, and so he kind of said that, and then I added a new category to the table. So I made a table and I was like, all right. And then I also want to define like, okay, if I'm spending my time in a way that is not conducive to being who I am, then I want to write like a solution column. Like, how do I change this? How do I redirect my energy so that I am spending my time to be in alignment with who I say I am essentially. And so that's, that's what I did. I, I, I created those two lists and it definitely gave me a lot of clarity and motivation to just kind of get clear. Cause I, I had to think about it. I had to like, and I, I get really detailed. So I was like, <laughs> how much time did I spend watching TV today? Or how long was my commute? Like, I want to see how long I right. spent in the car and what could I have been doing in the car right. that could have right. helped me? Could I have been listening to an audio book exactly. that might be conducive to what it is that I'm trying to learn? You know, what, what kinds of things could I have been doing to be more in alignment with this? Or like, what, what music was I listening to? And could I have been listening to something a little bit better, mm -hmm. you know, for yeah. my mentality at the time? So that's just what I ended up doing, just to get really granular about who am I? And then is what I'm doing in alignment with who I am being, I guess. Right. Yeah. And, to, and to put all of those things into perspective. And what I would say to a person kind of in a relationship like that, like, look at, look at everything, not just your relationship, look at how you are in all of your contexts. Look right. at, look at even your body because your body is a representation of where you are spiritually as well. So, you know, read your body. If your if your energy is low, often consider that and maybe think about what, what could be leading to that. What, what's draining your energy, you know? Think, think of things like that. It's, it's, it's truly a entire person concept that you have to consider so that you can get to the root of what it is that you believe that might be holding you back from what you want. And that's, that's really what I had to do. So that was some soul searching. That that's was now was this an individual work, right? right? So that's, is that, right. Oh, that's, that was my question. Is that an individual thing? Or did you guys do that as a couple? Or did you share it after the conflict started when you started checking? Right, you say, here, you, you need what? to check my list. <laughs> I wrote a list, and right. this is what I put on there. When, when you started becoming a butterfly. So you went into this cocoon, and right. as you're making these lists, right. little, little cracks in the cocoon start happening, right? And so you're starting to emerge. So at what point did you share or did you even share what you right, were doing right. with did your you mate? Right. I, I did share as I was doing it. And, and this was probably about a year and a half or so ago when I first started to okay. think that this was important, know that soul searching was necessary just because I realized like there were, there was a lot of, I guess, unhappiness with like where I was yeah, yeah. with, or just a lot of like, I wanted change, I guess. Mm -hmm. Like I knew that change was necessary with like 
my career path. Like there were just things that I felt called to do. I knew that I wanted a deeper relationship with God in that my spiritual journey that I wanted to embark on that. And so I went down a few rabbit holes that led me to, <laughs> to where I am now <laughs> spiritually, thankfully, and just, I, and physically I wasn't where I wanted to be. So I went down that journey too. So there was just, it, I was just at a point where I'm like, I need change and I need it now. So I was willing to do what it takes. And a lot of times people don't, but that's when people make like their biggest breakthroughs too, is like when it's like everything needs to change right. and they just start doing it. And but they do change whatever is scared. Yeah, change but you just scared, tear it up right? and you just start anew. I mean, right. basically. How do you do that? So, so you're under 30. How does a person 40 who has been in the hole a long, long time, <laughs> or may even be 50 and mm -hmm. been in a relationship for 10, 15 years, or even in a marriage for 20 years, and they want that. Because now let's think, it, it took your relationship, you know, four years or three years, right? Or maybe even two and a half for you to realize I need to change. Right. And I have to change in order to make my relationship better. Right. Well, she had to make herself better before right. she made a relationship right. better. Right, but there's, right. again, we're talking about how do we communicate to other people that they too can have a better relationship by self development. Right. And I think and how do they get how do they get to that point? Because some people don't feel like they have it within them. Uh, and I mean, some people are, are pretty scared at the fact of even stepping out and what their mate may think, or even the fact of losing their mate if they decided to change. What advice? How do you tell people to just Get over the fear. Yeah, and, get and, over. And that's pretty much yourself. it. Get yeah. over the fear and just start living. Like, what do you tell that person to do? I would say that you, you know. Nope, I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> it's. I was gonna say it's complicated. It's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> but I'll. I'll say it. no, but I'll. I'll give it my. My give it my best shot. There you go. Uh, well, so, so think about the young Raven, and then mm -hmm. think about the older Raven. 10 years ahead if she hadn't made that change how do you do it because it's not easy yeah if, even though some of us want to do it or some of us need to do it sometimes there's those who just don't know what the first step is so yeah. give it your best shot because it's not complicated <laughs> so if raven, raven is 10 years older than she is today and she did not make the change now she's at the crossword where she has to make the change or she's just going to spend the rest of her life miserable or unhappy Happy not being fulfilled, still looking for somebody else to complete her. How do we do that? I really was at a point when I made the change, I was at a point where I truly felt like I didn't know what I was going to do, but it was probably going to end up really bad, right. really badly if I didn't make the change. Like I felt like it was make the change or else really mm -hmm. for me. And I, I don't want people to feel like they're at that point a lot of people before feel they like start that. Yeah. changing. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. a lot of people, people are like that in relationships right. or just right. in life in general, but we're dealing with relationships, but specifically in relationships because we lose ourselves in relationships. Right. We're so willing to give more to the other person that we really do. Sometimes we lose ourselves without ever really finding out who we are. So that's why I asked, so go ahead. So you don't want people to feel like that, but unfortunately they are. So, right. And I think it starts with the realization, like for me, I had to first ground myself. I know spirituality looks different for everyone, but it took me grounding myself and just realizing that, cause I, I want to be religiously respectful, but realizing that I am greater than my circumstance. Okay. Right. I'm greater than this physical body. I'm greater than these trials and tribulations. Like I am greater than, and just realizing that there's more to life than trouble or more to life than, than just what I've experienced so far. Like that was my hope that, that was what I leaned on to allow me to make the change because I knew that if I could just hold on and, and allow myself to work at something or just dedicate myself and commit myself to changing myself for the better, whether that was physically. And again, it, this was always, I was trying to change at once. Uh, <laughs> but if I could just dedicate myself to a program that was inspired by me and what I wanted to actually see for myself, if I could commit myself to that and even see like the smallest bit of progress, then I'd be in a better place already. Like even 
just the smallest bit of progress. And that was really all I needed just to know that like things get better and I am greater than this currently. And I think it takes like that realization because if you don't think, if you think you're just the relationship or you're just your physical body, or you're just like the circumstances that you're currently in, then you might not see a point to making changes because you're dependent on that. You develop some kind of codependency with yeah. between you and your circumstance or you and your partner or whatever the case may be. So you have to realize that you're greater. And it, it starts with that idea. If you just let that idea settle somewhere, even if it's just like the smallest incubation of that idea inside, even if it's an experiment, <laughs> you know, sometimes we just, sometimes it's like, let me just hypothesize that this might be true mm -hmm. and then commit myself to something that I can change because you can't change everything, but what can you change? Like commit yourself to something that you can and want to change and then give yourself time to actionably change that thing. And when you see progress on it, celebrate that. And then it, it, it empowers you to keep making those positive right. changes. Mm -hmm. Right. So do you think, and, and saying all of that, do you think, and I don't know if you would define it like this, that you were settling? Did you feel as though you were settling because you weren't being true to you by doing the things or verbalizing the way that you wanted to? Do you think that it, it was kind of a, I'm just going to, I'm, I'm going to go a, along with whatever. Right. right. I'm in a relationship. Things are going well. Right. I don't really need to say a whole lot. We're getting along well. Everybody's happy. So I don't really have to rock the boat. Well, I'm thinking more in terms of people who settle in their relationships. Well. So did you, you feel as though that was a settlement when you, before you decided to make, before you hypothesized and said, you know what, I'm greater than this. Was the greater really more like a, a, an epiphany that the fact that you were really settling for less than what you're capable of having. It, it was, and I will um, preface that again with like, I think I was settling in life in general oh, too. Exactly. Like it, it yeah. definitely, it, it wasn't like, oh, my relationship is stagnant. It was more like I was at that point in my life, there were just a lot of negative things that were happening. My grandmother had, I, well, I had a series of deaths in the family, including my grandmother, which was a very large impact to me, had a car accident, just all types of health challenges. There's a lot of things kind of happening back to back to back. And I started to settle for the idea that bad things yeah. happen to me yeah. mm -hmm. and there's and like a, this, there's this do. invisible dark cloud over me and I have no control over it. And I just need to accept that this is my life. This is how my life is like bad things will continue. Cause it was all in short succession, how these things were happening. So I was like, I was settling for the idea that bad things happen and there's nothing I can do about it. And that's, that is kind of where I found myself. And it's like, but if you settle for that idea, in one aspect of life, you will settle for that idea in all aspects of life. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well said. It'll show up everywhere because mm -hmm. that dark cloud is wherever you are and you take those emotions everywhere. You're, you're, you're attracting that. So you Every, believe yeah, right. it. You're, right. you're believing oh, that there's and, a dark cloud. And that's so. how you can easily settle in a relationship because you'll go, well, this happened because, yeah, everything else is out of sync. So, so my it's relationship okay. is going right. to be out of sync. Right. So yeah. it's okay right. to, yeah. to not go as well as I wanted to because right. that's just kind of the way it is right. and you're happy for the happy and so times and you just deal with the the times that's not so happy yeah. yeah that's just settling that's just going through life that first step that first step so when you decide i need to change that first step what was it mm -hmm. besides the list because you know we can write a list we can and sometimes but you, know, you gotta I'll get up off your button right, right. i'll write something. a bunch of to-do right. lists and cross off some of them writing it down and actually staying true to it the first step. It was making a schedule, I think. So using that list to mm -hmm. actually create a schedule around, because I knew that, all right, if I, like, I need that discipline. You said I what? Need a, she, oh, that's, that's, yeah, because yeah. she's a scheduler. She's like, as soon as we want to do something, she'll say, I we feel need that. Schedule. I feel connected to, like, I feel like we're cousins or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that. But yeah, so like the scheduling, that's what I did. So I was like, all right, in order to take this, like, now that I know where I spend my time, 
and where I need to be spending my time. Now I need to organize my time or else I'll still be doing the same thing Absolutely. that I was doing. Right, expecting something different, right? <laughs> right. So I'm like, I want to lose some weight. So I need to schedule some gym time in there, but I got to look at my work commute and everything like that. So I'm like, okay, well, I had to take into account like the times of the day where I was the most energized or the things that like, schedule it, but make it so that it's doable for me too. And sometimes that was uncomfortable too. Like I ended up going, to, getting up super early so I could go to the gym before going to work in the mornings and then having a commute that is kind of lengthy made that sometimes challenging, but I got used to that. And I eventually developed a routine around my goals. Like, okay, I'll go to the gym and then I'll come home and engage in these activities that are going to help push the needle forward. And in, in my extracurricular endeavors this way, but still give my 100% at work where, right. where I need to be doing that. So I'm not shortchanging um, my colleagues or my students. So th things like that, it came to that. Like, how can I show up right. the best version of me in all of these ways or all of these roles where I intend to make a change or make a change, make a change, dominate. Yeah. yeah. So it was the mental commitment, right? Right. Along I think, with the and, schedule. <laughs> right. Along the mental the commitment to the, the schedule. Mental commitment to the schedule allowed me to have the physical commitment to the schedule. You know, I tell, and it's, this is often a different direction, but I tell people that often about weight. Like, you know, they're like, oh, well, I want to lose weight, but this, and I think, we all can lose weight and mm -hmm. we all can have good relationships if we make the mental commitment. I right. think that's because once you made up in your mind that you're going to do something, it takes that I'm going to do it mentality. Yeah. You can't be wishy-washy, right? Right. Like, well, I want to do it. I want to change, but you know, yeah, what if, if this it, person but... doesn't accept it or what if my mate doesn't like it or what if my, what if I don't have time at work? Like we can make up all these excuses, right? Yep. But, mm -hmm. it, it, but I think when we are a hundred percent, 110% in on mental commitment, I don't, I don't think we, we can be, we can falter. I don't think people can change our no, minds. No, I don't think so. And I think that you can, that helps you to overcome obstacles because whenever you enact change, you're going to have an obstacle, right? So you, right. you, you have an obstacle, maybe a setback, but if you're mentally into it, you can overcome that obstacle and you can go. But if you go in half-heartedly yeah like, I, I want a little change or i want, or, I want to lose a little weight or like and, you said the commute the commute right. could have been an issue right, right. i get up go, early i'm right. tired right now you want me to get up extra early drive no <laughs> right. i'm not really i just want a little weight off i don't want it all off. so <laughs> right you may right. not you might not commit to because you, you just got a toe into it you're not really your foot is not all the way into it so you just like okay i just want to do a little bit but when we dive in mentally oh we're all in right right that's and i would say yeah, definitely. I'll definitely say, I think that's like the biggest form of self-sabotage that we do <laughs> is that we like Absolutely. halfway committing to a thing mm -hmm. and then expecting, because when you halfway commit to something, you will also kind of halfway expect results. Yep, yep. Yep. And then when you don't get them because you only halfway committed, then you believe falsely that you weren't capable of seeing the results that mine is that something else supposed to see those, right. that mine is something else right <laughs> yeah we, we and all those things that you just said can take place within a millisecond mm -hmm. like we can we can think about all those things in a millisecond like we don't have to even verbalize it. all those things will go on in our head all right. at one time all at, right and, and, and we, but that's exactly how it is we'll like that's the biggest form of the biggest form of self-sabotage is not like not committing to a thing is halfway committing to a thing because you'll you'll make up beliefs after that that say like uh, <laughs> <laughs> you'll you'll make up beliefs that like reinforce the fact that i can't do this but in reality it's not that you can it's just that you didn't commit, commit fully right. you, you might have been to the gym, i'm gonna work out but... when i come home Right. And then he comes uh, home. No, 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 and then, no, no, no. I then say we have a lot I'm, of work to do. I, I'll say. I'm. Uh, yeah. I'm, we might work might. out. What is it? Right. So if someone says, <laughs> so if you told yourself, Raven, that I might change, I need to change, but I might change. Uh -huh. Is that is that mm. full in commitment? 
That's not full commitment. What is that? It, it, what is it's that full self, commitment if I, that's self-sabotage, if I do it. it? If it? I do it, I'm full in. If I don't, I'm full in. So either way, I'm full know. in. That's self-sabotage. I don't know. That's a, that's a little sabotage <laughs> <laughs> A little sabotage Even your Even your explanation of it. Exactly. Like, <laughs> You, you've already convinced yourself that it makes sense. Yep, yep, right. yep. So, and if you, and, and so Sabotaging. If you, yep. So if you tell yourself, I'm going to change uh, if it gets rough enough, right? Right. Yeah. I'm going to change if they don't do this, or I'm going to change if... So you're you saying know, my, my change is because of your conditions? Ch- your change? Yeah, my ability to change or commit. My commitment is based on, you know, different... No, it's just self sabotaging. Oh. <laughs> it's just point blank. It's just you know the commitment level when something comes out of your mouth, right? Right, and right. and I know right. how I feel so, when I say certain things. Yeah, right. sabotaging. Sabotaging. <laughs> That's the new word. That's the word. That's, That's it. The new word. That's the word of the day. Sabotaging. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right. So, because if Raven, if Raven had went in saying, "I'm going to change," but I'm going to wait for my partner or my mate to change first that was what self-sabotage you right Self, right self-sabotage. yeah because Definitely. you're you're like okay i'm not going to change until they change so you're already not really made the commitment to change mm-hmm. right yeah i mm-hmm. hear what you're saying but when you go full in mm-hmm. it doesn't matter who changes or who doesn't right because you you're committed because you're committed right so right. did your mate see the change in you before you told them that you wrote the list you made the schedule like what sent us through the oh, whole you got a plan because we know we know there was a conflict we don't want <laughs> yeah. all of it we don't want all of right. it we just want, we just want the roadmap because you had to give them the roadmap right <laughs> so, so at what point so, right. so was the mm-hmm. decision to change yours or your mate like was it something that you all like was there a fight? Was there just things weren't going right? You said, you know what? I can't do this. I need to change relationship wise. Cause like you said, it, it happens in your whole life because right. but we're I think only she one person. Every, but I think she tore up everything. Not only just a relationship, but life wasn't going well. Right, right. That's what I'm saying. So, right. That's what I'm saying. So that's usually what it is. Cause we're one person, right? We can't, we can't be this person in relationship and this person at work. Like we're only one person. We are who right. we are. Right. So, but at what point did you say, as far as the relationship, you made the list or you decided to change or you shared the list with your partner. How did those steps go? And like, how was it done? How did you say, hey, look, we need to change. And I'm starting with me. I started with me first because I just knew that I like I needed like whether or not you come in. <laughs> you, <laughs> you, weren't, you weren't trying to self-sabotage sabotage yourself. <laughs> no, I was like, look, because if I if I make it and it's, it's, it's that exactly like you were saying, Tina, and like a part of me would say that to, to add to your previous question, like what you were saying about somebody who doesn't believe that change is possible. I would just say that if you sense that a change needs to be made, just go ahead and take that forward momentum. That thought, that idea is momentum. Move on that and start making some changes. Even if it's just a small change, even if it's journaling about it and Mm -hmm. letting ideas or inspiration come to you as to how to make that change or how to implement that change into your life, but use that momentum and don't, like, don't let that die out and don't make it conditional on someone else's response right. either. And I think that's what you're getting at there. I right. couldn't make it conditional on anybody else's response. Like I just needed to change for me. So I just went ahead and did what I needed to do. I hooked up with my trainer <laughs> and I was like, all right, I found them. You're perfect. Tell me what I need to do. And he's like, all right, make these lists and, you know, we're going to get you on a plan and all these other other things. And so I made the list and I'm like, oh, this is great. Like he gave me guidelines. I went a little bit overboard with it, but it was, it was what I needed to do mm-hmm. for me. And then I shared that information like, hey, this is what I'm doing. I got a trainer, all these other things. But regardless, this is what I'm doing. Like it, mm-hmm. what, how, did they open, how, how did they, how did they accept that? Because again, that's, that's change. And right. sometimes as much as your mate loves you, yeah. they're not really open to your change because they feel like um, You're pushing that on me. This or is or what no, they're losing on. you or they're right. losing well, control. True. I'm losing the person that I, that yeah, I love. Yeah, yeah. Or, or you, hey, I don't yes. want you to change. So right. when you said, hey, look, I'm doing this, what was their response? They were actually supportive okay. of okay. it because, again, there was a change in my attitude that was apparent, but it okay. was a positive change for me as well, instead of like just accepting that bad things happen, okay. mm-hmm. there was more of a, a positive and optimistic 
okay attitude taking place so that was well received good. too so it was like okay this is good let's see where it goes because there have been times where i've been wanting to make changes you, you before, sabotaged I, yourself there's been times that, myself. <laughs> there's been times that you I'm said going i'm going to change you right. Said, right there's the times you said i'm going to if i feel like it right in the right. back of your, you said i'm going to do this but in the back of your mind you said if i feel like it so it was it was like that jason oh that right sabotage, right, right? Little so, sabotage. Right, right right so so your partner was well aware that they had been through this before, right? Like you said, there right. have been times already in the past, but now they had saw, right, right. a change. A positive so go ahead. change. Mm -hmm. Right. So the changes were apparent, but it was an attitude shift that was apparent first. And I think that's important that, like you said, that strong mental commitment and then that attitude shift to match did the mental. Neck? Did you see that neck, Jason? Yeah, that she said attitude. That yeah. yeah, I saw <laughs> that, that too. <laughs> <laughs> That, you got yeah, she felt something. that. Right, yep. right, right. She yeah. got to see the uh -huh. that attitude. I, so after I made that mental, I had to make that physical, which was my attitude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. I didn't even feel myself do that. Because uh -huh. so now you got attitude. That. See, I saw that was both of those components put together and just seeing the results from those small actions, like in, or I, I wouldn't say small actions, but those actions over a small period of time, oh. seeing like the little, like the micro results from that mm -hmm. and knowing that if I just stay consistent with that mental commitment and that attitude adjustment that I would continue to see. And those, those micro results wouldn't be so right. micro they would compound. anymore. Right. They would right. compound. They, right. They would add up. Any progress is good. I yeah, always say that moving forward. no matter how small. No matter how right. small, and that's what people forget. Like they'll say, well, I've been doing this for six months and I haven't seen anything. Mm -hmm. But what they fail to see is that you've been doing it right. for six months. Right. And anything you put work into, it's going, you're going to reap the benefits. You yeah. just have to be patient with it. It's so, going to show up right, in your like, life. So like you said, they were micro. And so we're, we're, still, we're, still, we're still getting back to that question of how did you like, so you started with yourself and then you told your partner and then mm -hmm. when did the conflict happen? Yeah, the, I guess as... I continue to see results and I continue to become more empowered by my own ability to kind of make things happen. That confidence increased for me to start vocalizing like my thoughts on certain things like, oh, this isn't working for me or oh, actually like this, you know, just, right. just vocalizing <laughs> myself a little bit more. And then that, that kind of became different, yeah, you know? Yeah. And so that's, that's kind of when, when conflict tends to tends to arise when you start to, but it, it came from me kind of being able to see myself make positive changes based on my ability to commit to a thing and like stay consistent with that commitment. Go ahead. Oh, that's it. Okay. That's so I'm now saying. your relationship as a whole, because you, you guys are going through your list and growing and all this other stuff, you guys have relationship goals and commitments that you guys are working on as well yes okay good 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 so you have individual goals now you have relationship goals so everybody's good individually yes and relationship we're good yes good. and we're, we're still working it's a work in progress well, yeah it, it's i'm not. still working on yeah i'm still working on my individual mm -hmm. goals too i'm a pretty ambitious person okay. <laughs> so if i meet a certain goal or a previous goal that i set for myself i don't want to be a person that's like never satisfied but i, I do like to but you i wanna... thrive off like challenges and gamification of things so like it <laughs> makes me Alive. it just keeps me going yeah, yeah it keeps me going to like see we are cousins I yeah know. i was telling jason like i just like to push myself I, I just like to push like push me too <laughs> i just <laughs> like not that i'm like you said i'm not that i'm not satisfied i just feel like i, I want to be able to go beyond i want to be able to push i, I just want to do more i don't know i don't know how to explain we it right this and we can accomplish this we can do even more right in the relationship was it uh more of a look, I'm changing, this is how I feel, and I need for you to change too? Or, and I guess what I'm getting to is it, was it more of, hey, look, this is who I'm going to be. So I need for you to get on board with it. And, and if you love me, then we'll work on this together. If not, then it is what it is. Like, how was that communicated as to what you were willing to accept, what you needed done, and 
what that looked like moving forward in your relationship. It it was kind of like what you said, like I'm I'm changing and this is how I'm changing and these are the things that I want to accomplish and I just want your understanding and support in that. And I would like for us to be able to grow in this direction together. It it, it kind of took that form. Okay. And they were like, sure, okay. No problem. No problem. I'm down with it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, because sometimes people go, well, wait a minute, you know. Yeah. I but mean, you know what? If you care, the- but again, if you love the person and they're willing to change and they're trying to make themselves better, then they, and they're asking but you to come along right. on this ride. Yeah, but sometimes I think okay. people feel like you're trying to say there's something wrong with them. Y- you know what I'm saying? Like well, the person, right. you are. Right, see? Right. right. Because right. you're saying, look, I'm changing. Right. And, I, and I'm going to change. Right. And I'm not going back. So if we want this thing to work, then. You need to change. Right. That's kind of like what you're saying pretty <laughs> right. much. Right? Right. 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 And so. It's, it's, it can come off that way. But it's really like. I don't know, because I think that conversation can definitely come off that way, but it's more just like a, hey, this is the process that I'm going through. It's it's like, I love the butterfly analogy that you, that you came up with earlier, but this is, this is like the process that I'm going through right now. And I don't necessarily need you to go through the same process. I just need you to understand that I'm going through this process Mm -hmm. and just work with me in that. But see, I say that because they fell in love with the old oh, raven yeah and right. here you go didn't you didn't put in there you didn't put in in that little fine print i'm going to change in two years <laughs> right 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 and then let's let's switch it mm-hmm. what if all of a sudden they wanted to change right you didn't fall in love with the person that they decided today they're gonna be right, right? so it's kind of right. like yes i need to change yes i need to evolve but then you're kind of telling your mate hey look i know that i need to change mm-hmm and, mm-hmm. and I guess it can be viewed in two ways. Like I need to change to make it better for us mm-hmm. or I need to change and either you change or it was good while it lasted. It's like two <laughs> ways that you're making take that. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and I'm sure initially But that's the chance like, you just have to take. I mean, yeah. when you get to a point where you're ready to grow, you have to stand out there on that edge. You do. I totally agree. And if you stand totally out agree. there, you're just going to you're gonna accept it however it comes. But, but now, you have to I, make I'm, that first now step. Now I'm being the, what they call it, devil's advocate. I'm mm-hmm. just saying for the person who you're in a relationship with, they're like, like, wait a minute. Like, mm-hmm. I fell in love with who you were two years ago. Mm-hmm. I fell in love with the quiet. I'll, I'll t- not the reserve. I'll tell you the this. Un- un- confrontational person, Raven. You know what I'm saying? And right. now all of a sudden, you like slap me in the face with all these things you want to wait a minute. Hold, hey, hold on. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And even though that's a wonderful thing for that person, that's like really difficult in a relationship standpoint when that's not the person you get into the relationship with. And those are the relationships so- that don't last. Don't say that. I'm talking about ravens. Oh, I under, no, I'm not talking about ravens. I'm just talking about either relationship oh, is mean, going to succeed or it's not going to succeed. Oh, they can't understand. Right. Okay, because they don't if, come along. If, if I can't deal with your change, then we won't make it. Right, exactly. But that, if so I like, can, then we can survive. And right, we can, that's what we I'm can kinda, love for another day. Yeah, so how did they feel? How did they take on that of not only you changing, but trying to adapt to the new you and changing with you? I definitely think it's a process too because and just just speaking generically i do see how people would like if someone just changes on you it's it's easy to personalize that and right. say oh there's something wrong with me absolutely and, absolutely and that's why you're changing and i think the thing that we all have to realize is that everyone is as much as we can love one another and all those good things everyone is still on very much an individual journey and they're going through life and they've got their individual things that they have to go through. That's not to say that they can't do that with someone else, but that's just to say that when they change or when they evolve, they're not doing that because of you, right? (laughs) you know, or because of this person or that person, they're doing that for them. And so that's something that you have to kind of, how do you express that? How do you express that to your mate? Because they're feeling like you're now projecting that on them. Right? Right. And I'm not ready to change. I'm happy with who I am. And And I'm I'm happy happy with with who who you are. are. (laughs) Right. Right. So I I didn't see anything wrong with you, Raven. I don't know why you want to go change on me. You know? Right. So how do you you tell a person that would, again, we're talking to this, somebody else out there who's listening. They want to change. They know they need change. 
how do they do that where one, you step out on faith, you, you have to do it, you have to get the courage to do it, mm. the need, and then two, how do you let your mate know it's not about them and, it's, and, and that there's nothing wrong with them, right? How, how, do, how does that happen? That's, yeah, I don't, I don't want to be cliche and say the whole, <laughs> um, it's not you, it's me <laughs> kind of thing. That's um, exactly what it turns out to be, right? right? In that situation, the way that I would go about it is just kind of explain like, once I were to give the other person like time to explain like their perspective and give myself time to just confirm that I'm hearing them and I'm understanding what they're saying, I'm understanding how they feel about it, then I'd, I'd provide my perspective as well. Like, for example, my inability to advocate for self, I would be honest about that. And it took some searching, like, like um, Jason pointed, some soul searching. It took some of that to realize that there was a part of me that felt unworthy of making decisions or declarations for myself. And I had to challenge that part of me if I truly want to be who I want to be, who I say I want to be, who I write out that I want to be, who I visualize myself being. And so I think that it takes that kind of inner uh, work where you have to look inside and just say, who do I want to be? And then and what is preventing me from being this person right now? Is there anything preventing me from being this person right now? So what is that? And then if that is a thing that is manifesting itself in your relationship, then you just have to be transparent about that. If the person accepts that, or if they decide to make it about them, I, I mean, I don't mean to be rude, <laughs> but that's, that's kind of like, you can, you have to be transparent about it and say that it's not about you, but this is something that I'm dealing with. I am trying to grow here. I'm trying to develop my consciousness in this way. And it, this in no way reflects on you, but this is just something that I'm going through that I need to understand and work out for myself. Being able to communicate that as clearly and honestly as possible is the best thing I think you could do. If the other person chooses to accept that or chooses not to accept it, there may not be a lot that you can do from that point. You can continue to reassure them if that helps, but you know, that person just has to understand that. I mean, I think that's one of the four agreements from what's that Don Miguel Ruiz is don't, don't mm -hmm. take anything personal. And that's true even in relationships, because again, we meet, we meet no one but ourselves. So understanding that when we're evolving is because of something that we see in us that needs to evolve, not because of something external. So were you willing to give up the relationship for your change? I know, hard question, right? You don't have to answer, but. <laughs> <laughs> and I say that because we want the change and then we but never really think. Cost. Right, right. It, it can't, can, exactly. That's what I'm saying. And we don't think about at what cost, but if it came down to that, were you willing to say, I've were you willing to choose that either me or this relationship? Because you've invested time. You love this person. Like, so. Even now, if it gets to a point where you're changing, you're becoming, your uh, manifestation of the person you want to become comes down to a stagnation in the relationship, are you willing to give the relationship up? And so I, I guess what I'm saying, should people be willing to give? And, and, and I guess right. going into it, that should be something that we're consciously aware of. Right. Am I willing to give up this relationship if it's not for the betterment of my soul and for who I want to be? I would say that ultimately people should be, but they, they should be willing to, if it's, a, if it's a relationship that they've been in, that they want to work on, like before giving it up, maybe be willing to work on it. Maybe, maybe be willing to work on it first. I know that was my kind of, my first idea. My first idea wasn't to give up the relationship. It was kind of like, let's, like this relationship needs work. And I recognize that because I need work and it because I need work, I realize that I've been in a relationship that will require work because I, I'm changing. And so the relationship dynamics are changing too. Yeah. I don't think we ever do it to say, no. like, I, I don't want this, like, I, you know, to get out of it. Right. I'm just saying if it comes down to that, yeah. like we, we change because we know that there needs to be changed, right? right? There needs to be mm -hmm. change. And we know that we want to change with that person. We want to grow closer together. We want to grow together. We want to, you know, experience love more abundantly together. So we do it because we know it's going to make the relationship better. But are you willing 
to if it comes to a point where it's either sacrificing your growth or sacrificing the relationship, are you willing to see that what you want initially? I want this relationship to work. I truly love you, but. So you're committed, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. you committed to this change. You committed to your relationship. So I think you're at this point, you're all in and you're going to do everything in your power to make the relationship work. Now it's a two way street. So if you get that same type of effort reciprocated, then it'll work. But if a person is just unwilling to do that. Or they say they, they're changing, but, but they're but not. They, right. But then that's a totally different um, and what, story. And I'm just so, saying, yeah. like, if it comes to that, have you thought that far, whereas you've actually thought about it? If this relationship gets to a point where it's, it's not where I want it, like the growth mm -hmm. isn't happening, or right. we're just not on the same page, are you willing to compromise? Are you willing to stick it out and maybe not grow as much as you should or are you willing to say okay it, it served its purpose right because a lot of things in our life come in and out of our lives to serve a purpose and it doesn't mean that they're here to stay and we have to come to that realization sometime so are you have you ever thought about that i think personally i haven't thought that because it's way, complicated just just because <laughs> <laughs> that is way complicated not because it's not so much because it's complicated, but because I've like felt that there's a willingness to work on both sides. The brighter side. We always want to see the brighter side. Yeah. Right. But I don't think people should compromise their growth and I don't intend to compromise my growth. Good answer. Good answer. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I want to ideally, like you said, the brighter side, we grow together mm -hmm. and my, that's where I lean and that's where I look. But I, I definitely think that just for someone out there, you just hurt yourself in the long run by compromising your growth. And that may breed resentment as well, uh, which will manifest itself some way. Yeah. I agree. Further down I agree. Line. Yeah. And yeah. that's, it's just not a healthy thing for you, nor is it for the person. You don't want to live in a way that restricts you from being able to truly express yourself. Right. And I think by staying in a place where you know that you're not living to your full potential, I don't think that that's beneficial for either party. I may feel comfortable at first, but it's just not, it's not going to be comfortable <laughs> in the long yeah, run it's yeah, not going to be good for anybody the uncomfortable thing at first to do is going to be the thing that's best in the long run and sometimes you have to do that like the but the, it's like the longer you wait to do the uncomfortable thing right. the more uncomfortable it becomes be. being in class with us did you take into respect how your past or how your upbringing played a part in who you were in your relationship, you mean? Yeah, in her, in her relationship, okay, because yeah. like you yeah. said, you didn't verbalize a lot because you had your brothers to advocate for you and your parents to advocate for you. Do you see how that your past kind of dictated the type of person you became? And now you're at a point where you need change. But do you see how if we kind of take a closer look into our past, how it really dictated who we were or who we are? Oh, yes, definitely. And most of that is good, I'll say. I mean, I'm, I'm, I believe I, I turned out pretty good <laughs> as far as, you know, well-mannered, all, all those good things. But, you know, just simple things, very like Southern hospitality, things that I learned. But I also learned to like, if somebody offers you something like, and you go to their house and they offer you something like respectfully decline, whatever it is they offer, even if you want it, like just respectfully decline because... It's the polite thing to do. If someone offers you a choice between two things, like say it doesn't matter so that the other person can get their choice. So just little things like that subconsciously led me to believe that whenever a decision was to be made, I should yield to another person right. or I should not truly voice. Like if I want something, don't voice it. Just hope that people can read my mind and give me what I want. Basically. Right, 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 <laughs> that, right. That's, kind of that, that's a Just, good revelation, understanding the little things that added up to the fact of saying that you you were not able to make, or you shouldn't, shouldn't make the decision. Decisions. Leave that to right. someone else. And then right. but sacrifice yourself in the process. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. fine when you're a kid, but as an adult, yeah. that doesn't work. Right. Yeah. Right. And so that that's just something that I, and I realized like, 
while there are things from my childhood right. that definitely shaped me for the better, mostly there are like those little things that are also remembered like, oh, that might be why like subconsciously I just I never really had to experience making a choice between things or right. being seen and heard in a place that's that I was a told, very good um, that's... be seen not heard don't touch that you know yeah because right. yeah, my like... kids are totally opposite yeah. they are totally <laughs> opposite even with the training we gave them training but I'm telling you they yeah. they they think they're supposed to make all the decisions and, right. and and I yes, think it, again it probably becomes you know from their parents like me who is very outspoken. Wait a so. You said parents, and then you said me. Who are outspoken? <laughs> oh, okay. All right. They get it from their parents because they think just you talk uh, up a lot too. Okay. Yeah, you know you, you don't sit back and everybody knows you're in the room when you're in there. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I'm more of the yeah. outspoken. Like if if I feel like I've been violated, oh, you're boy. going to everybody's going to hear it. Right. Yeah. So if a hailstorm. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> pretty much, right? <laughs> so, I mean, I'm not a person that, and but again, I had to learn that though. Yeah, I, it was because of my background, right? It was because my mom was quiet. It was because people picked on us because we were a family of all girls. So you either fight and survive, as we talked about, or you perish, right? And and so I became who I was because of the trials and tribulations and my background and my caregivers, all of that played a role in who I ultimately became as an adult. Yep. Right. I'm looking at your mama. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, but that's, I'm glad, you know, mm -hmm. understanding what she says, because now it kind of helps me understand other people who are similar like that, who yep. don't make decisions. And hmm. in my eyes, I'm thinking like, mm -hmm. just make a decision. Like either you want right. this, you want that, but it, Again, it's their upbringing, right? Right. So right. you were taught that let someone else make the decision. To be mannerable. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. and people from the South are definitely different than people from the North. Definitely. definitely. Right? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then it's also, I think about why was I taught that? And then I have to think, oh, well, my parents were raised a certain way. Like they they had their own upbringing too. And I have to think, well, my, you know, my mom comes from a pretty large family and she's used to taking care of, like, she's the oldest sister of like seven, seven, Thanks. six siblings. She's one of seven. So that would, you know, she's probably used to taking care of a lot of people and like kind of teaching them some of those things. I can see how some of the things from my childhood that I might've thought was weird Right. Like how it probably just stems from their childhood and right. then so on and so forth. Like you probably just yeah. trace that all yep. the way back down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and, I, and I think uh, that's also a thing in relationships. If we kind of take the time to kind of figure out our mate and their background and mm -hmm. what shaped it, it'll give us a better understanding. Of you know, and I, think, right. and I think even if you have the conversation with your mom now, like, Hey, you know, I was taught this. I think as parents, we don't think that you're going to become an adult and then not make a decision. You know, I think right. we, we try to teach our kids to be mannerable, to be respectful, to do things, mm -hmm. but then we don't realize the impact it has as they right. constantly grow up. And they're still referring back to what they were supposed to do right, when they child. were seven, eight, right, nine, right. ten. Right. You know, it's funny how... Well, that's on a lot of fronts. I mean, yeah. we didn't, you know, they didn't teach us about money, you know, decision making. And they just think stuff. we know that and you're then supposed after the to switch. Twelfth grade, they just drop drop us off at college, and we have to make all these decisions. Yeah, and right. sometimes we make enough good decisions to get through, and then sometimes we we don't. And and that's all relationships are about, right? And that's all it is. Navigate. It's about background decisions making, yeah. self growth, understanding the process, understanding ourselves as well as our mate, mm -hmm. and then realizing that. I think loving ourselves and coming to the relationship whole. Yeah, they need to take out sex education in uh, high school and put in. No, they need that too because people no. still learn that to being educated with. I that think anything. they got that already. <laughs> no, that's the problem. Yeah, they don't. They don't have it, right? <laughs> they need some relationship. No, training. they they but, actually. Well, I want to. That's ask, a whole other story. So, Raven, you aren't you t sticking your toe into entrepreneurship? Yes, I am. Now, is it the toe or are you fully committed? I'm fully committed to it, but okay. right now, but I am in a career right, right now that I'm transitioning out of. So I'm like swirling my big toe <laughs> <laughs> in it right now that I, I intend to be swimming in it a little bit. Okay. So you want to, you want to talk about that? Want to share that? 
So we oh, give you an yeah, opportunity yeah. to um, promote your business if you want to. Let us know about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, a lot of what I'm doing right now is in the very much like startup launch kind of phase, but I am working on um, starting up a digital marketing agency called Top Reach Media, and it, that'll be specializing in Facebook advertising for service-based and, and product-based industries. That'll be pretty good. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I've been learning a lot about digital marketing, SEO, yep. um, website development, all that good stuff. So that I'm, I'm looking forward to, to diving into that. And then I'm launching an e-commerce brand as well called Ascend to Transcend the to number two. And that's focusing on organic hair and skincare products, okay. uh, primarily for people of color. I'm looking forward to launching that one is a kind of a passion project. Okay. Project of mine. In addition to having kind of some positive apparel stem stem from that as well. Okay. So I am looking positive forward apparel. To that. What exactly does that mean? It's like positive messaging on like t-shirts, af athleisure wear, basically where okay. like an uplifting messages, kind of to speak to that I am that we were talking about before. Some uplifting messages on shirts because so, I I think more and I love that there are a lot of apparel companies that are doing that more often like with, with positive messages, but I, I definitely want to add my spin to that. So all right. All right. We'll, well we that. wish you great luck yeah. in both in all three endeavors, your Thank entrepreneurship you. and in your relationship. Right. Thank you. Just, that's for sure. Go and make sure you go and make it happen. So that's right. now what I want you to do be is fully in right. because it's going to be hard. All of it, relationships and entrepreneurship. Right. But yeah, she, she got it. She got, she got, she got a good head on her shoulder. <laughs> She'll pull it off with no problem. But what I want you to do is just make sure you give us the information. Then that way I can update the show notes and have all of the information to your website and all of that other stuff when you start Absolutely. to launch your products and stuff. So as you start to progress and get more and more into it, just communicate with us and let us know. And we will like promote you the best way we can. Yep. All right. Absolutely. And then you, you, and then, you know, once things get up and going after about a year or so, you come back, you talk about the entrepreneurship and where your relationship is and how that <laughs> affected you. <Yeah. them. laughs> okay. So you just keep us up to date with really what's going on. <laughs> okay. Okay. So thank you so much. We wish you all the luck in all of your endeavors. Yes. And is there anything that you would like to add? Any piece of advice that you would like to give someone? Anything that you've learned from? I would just say, just recognize who you are, recognize those parts of you that even if it's just the smallest inkling of, of something that's inside of you that, that might need to, that you might need to change or just re rework. Like there's, there's no big catastrophic event that needs to happen to launch change. You can recreate your thoughts, your words, your deeds at any given time. And that's completely up to you when you decide to do that. So don't feel like that needs to be an external process or something that is triggered externally. Definitely do that at the points that you feel are appropriate for you and enjoy life. So just spend time enjoying life and being thankful for it. Wonderful. Wonderful. Great advice. So we're going to wrap really have up. a good head on your shoulder. You, you got a bright future ahead of you. No, I mean, I, I always thought you were like super quiet, but you're not. <laughs> you, you're, very, you're very driven, which is, which is good. And I wish you all the success that you so deserve. You are all of those things that you say you are. Okay. And I wish you the best in your relationship and your entrepreneurial endeavors. All right. And thank we thank you. you so much for coming on the show. And that wraps it up for another episode of Love and Beyond the I Do. And as always, we're, we're in, in it to win it. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Love and Beyond the I Do podcast. Head over to iTunes to subscribe and leave a review. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Legendary Relationship or visit our website at legendaryrelationship.com. Till next time, remember to make every day count.